So I was asked to talk about um, inserting population health into um, ongoing initiatives or new initiatives. And when I started, I was kind of like Dorothy, like I started to write about this and I'm like, well, we all know how to do this, right? Like this, everybody does this, like th this is standard, ac like academic, not, not academic even, uh, university, but like research, like, you know, what do you need to do? And it's like, oh, you need to be entrepreneurial and you need to be willing to take risks. And that's, that's totally true. And we all do that all the time in terms of like, writing grants. Like I'm going to, I'm going to aim to this journal. I'm going to bridge out and try and do this new intervention. Um, but I think when you layer on the notion of like, I'm going to try and embark on population health and really honest to God, try and be interdisciplinary and be intersectoral. You're doing that risk, but it takes on, another, there's like another layer of icing on top of it, right? Because there's a whole different set of skills that you need when you're going to walk into a room and try and pitch something to people who don't necessarily speak your language, right? And so I had actually told people I was going to, um, I'm, I'm right now in the middle of one of my new inserting population health initiatives, and I think it's super illustrative. And I know there are some other people, at least I know Lindsay's involved in this. Um, so I was asked... Um, in January, I was we got I, I got asked pretty late in the game if I would be Penn State's um, point person on the CIC Health Equity Initiative. So if any of you are at Big Ten schools, um, all of Big Ten schools plus Chicago um, are partnering with each other and all of the state health departments in the footprint of those states. And we were asked, Michelle, develop a five-person interdisciplinary team to come to Chicago for a two-day meeting about how to solve children's health inequities, and not disparities, inequities. It's really very social justice oriented. And so like, for me, I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm so used to being in this room. You know, you collect people that you know are team players and you figure out the best way to build bridges. But then you go to a meeting with, there were there 120 of us at that first meeting. So across 16 universities, people from multiple in, multiple disciplines and then public health agencies on top. So 120 stakeholders in a room who did not have our training about how to talk to each other <laughs> to get to common ground. And um, there was somebody else from the RWJ program there and I said, oh my gosh, this reminds me of the first seminar at Wisconsin when we sat down with an ecologist and a sociologist and somebody from public health and we, had a very polite discussion about what the word population meant. <laughs> and, and so one of the things I think is really a challenge and you have to overcome is the fact that we were, we are so lucky that we got trained about how to have these conversations to put people on common ground. But oftentimes, like interdisciplinary is super buzzword right now, intersectoral is super buzzword. Not every, like everybody doesn't know how to do this. And so you kind of have to go into those situations and go, okay, this is going to be challenging. We're going to have to really work to build common languages and teams. I'm going to have to understand that, like when I sit down with people, like something that was very, I, I keep looking at Lindsay because she was in the room. But somebody from the like a state health department, like they have different stakeholders than I do. They have different metrics that they are responsible for. They have different like things they're responsible for reporting. And so you kind of have to go into those and really, this training gives you the opportunity to really say, wow, I have a skill set and I'm going to really work to make this work. But and so that's kind of one of the ways I think. Um, of course, all research has you know, risks, but there's an extra layer because you really have to build these bridges in a different way and recognize that not everybody has this training, but you have tremendous opportunity to help set those new footprints. Um, and so definitely the language thing is, um, is, a, is a big issue. Um, the other thing I think is that, you know, we're also really used to leaning out. Um, that's what I call it. Um, we were all trained to sit in a room and talk to an economist and plan a meeting with somebody who's a psychologist. But other people are not are not used to that. Like they're they're in the room because they want to get something done, but they don't have that same train. Like it's not so natural to go out of my economic um, world and think about a you know a different type of method or a different you know way to do research. Um, and so these kinds of things make it such that sometimes when you jump into the pool and kind of do something that's really trying to pull population health in, like it just, there's an extra layer to get things done. And so one of the things I think that's really critical, um, and in fact, I kind of, again, I, I keep looking at Lindsay, just come up here and talk with me. Um, 
one of the things we did at our second meeting, so the first meeting was kind of like, wow, there's a lot of voices in the room. And the second meeting, you know, a, a group of us got together and it was like, okay, I'm gonna trust you. And I, like, and I don't wanna say it was like, kumbaya, hold your hands, but it was like, we're gonna do this, we're gonna be united front, and we're gonna, we're gonna bring other people in. And so I think the sooner you can kind of build trust and make it so that you all recognize, yes, I'm gonna come out of sociology, and I really am gonna come out of sociology, and I don't care that my silo wants me to be over here. I'm, I'm gonna trust that I'm in it for me and I'm in it for you, and you can build those trust networks. It's, it's, it's critical, because if you don't have trust, like it, it's gonna just blow up in, in your face, because everybody's beholden to too many different gods, right? Um, the other thing is I think you have to make, make allies. Allies are critical. Um, I, I think one of the things in terms of thinking about like both in my institution and out of my institution, like going to people who work at my research institutes and saying, I'm gonna try and make this work. This is what I think I can see the investment being for Penn State, because that's where I am. Them being on board and saying, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. We're gonna do this to help make it so that you can be more successful, super important. And then you get in that, in that room of people you're trying to work with and you find the people that's like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go in this. We're gonna have each other's backs. We're gonna and and we're gonna really support each other's to make it like the allies are incredibly incredibly important. Um, and then the other thing is you know sometimes these big interdisciplinary like this program is an example of it. Sometime I, I I don't remember who I was talking to in the room. I remember the first year because I was in the first cohort and the the eighteen of us sat in Scottsdale and we were like what the heck did we get ourselves into? <laughs> like, we have no idea how we fit together, what this program is. Like, it felt really, really risky. But even in that first meeting, there were groups of us who were like, well, I don't know, maybe this won't work, maybe I won't get a new job, but like, at least we can do research and have a grant. And so I think it's always good to know when you walk into these things that are really risky, even if you're, and, and this worked, like this was phenomenal success. But even if that first opportunity doesn't work, often what will come out of it five or 10 years later is really, really re rewarding and enrich enriching and has new opportunities. And so, I, you know, I think that's like, go into these things knowing that they're a little more risky, but that sometimes even if the, the main end all be all goal doesn't work, there's always something over here that can come out of it that's gonna be really super enriching and rewarding. And, and that's all I really have. And again, like I said, this program is a testament to why you take these kinds of, ri of risks, though, and build these kinds of bridges, because, I mean, this has been a phenomenally successful venture that I'm thrilled to have been a part of.